Now, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you the uh, um, 2014 Junior Parliamentarian of the Year, just announced on Wednesday, Dello, um, Maya Dello, member for Kira. Maya is uh, a year eight student from Wollongong. Uh, she has done this before at a, at a bar camp, and she's a, she's a true professional. The ABC is here. They have mic'd her up, um, and she's ready to go, and she's going to talk to you about um, Minecraft, beyond gaming, how Minecraft can teach us. And so just that you're not irritated, we also have Ann Bartlett Bragg here. Um, just as a standby assistant, and I'm sure we won't need you, but just to be aware if she pops out of nowhere. <laughs> and Maya, you're in charge, take it away. Um, and we're really looking forward to this. So yeah, my name is Maya Dello. I'm a 13 year old who is, from, who is a year eight student from Wollongong. I'm going to talk about Minecraft as an educational tool. Using games as a tool for education is important because it's bringing in the technology from, a, from the student's environment into the classroom. Many parents will tell you that their kids are addicted to their devices. And although this may not really be a good thing, in the classroom it makes the student interested when used. If a child is interested or excited about what or how they are being taught, they are more inclined to learn and take in the knowledge and want to participate in the lesson. We need to bring this sort of gaming into the classroom because gone have the days of blackboards and chalk. We're now using smart boards and data projectors as they are more interactive on a technological scale. Although many schools may still use blackboards, they then more often than not have some sort of data projector, iPad or computer in the classroom for the students to use. We must pay attention to technology because it's not because if not, that's how we get left behind. As technology is moving quicker than ever, we need to be on it faster than ever. We need to pay attention because technology and gaming can open many doors for students, teachers, and anyone in general, even you guys. <laughs> Before I talk about Minecraft, I do want to briefly talk about two other games because Minecraft is not the only game out there that can be used for an educational tool. For example, SimCity, a city building game series, and Portal, a first person puzzle platform game, which both can have an educational purpose. SimCity, with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation support, it is a game covering the Common Core and Next Generation Science Standards. It is a science game designed for grades 6 to 8. The Institute of Play found that the attention they were given by the students had skyrocketed when playing the game. Portal, although it wasn't designed to be an educational, educational game, it does have some educational elements, especially physics and critical thinking. It is a science fi and adventure game which you only have a portal gun to get you through each puzzle. With it, you have to use physics. There is a corporation called Valve and they have, with the association with Portal and STEM, taken the game a step further and taken Portal into the classroom to teach a range of topics such as physics, chemistry and mathematics. They have set up various lessons for these teachers. They can access to uh, teach these topics and they have called this Tech with Portals. Portal and SimCity are just two examples of the many games out there that have educational elements. And although I'm here to mainly focus on Minecraft, I hope that you can see from these two examples that there are other games out there that can also be educational. But each game is different, so now I'm going to talk about Minecraft and how it's great for education. Minecraft. Minecraft is an innovating virtual world, sort of like Lego, a sandbox indie game invented by a Swedish programmer which has three elements that I want you all to remember. <laughs> One, no particular objective. There is no objection, <laughs> objective whatsoever. There is no, also no manual for the game, and I think that's what makes it so addictive, having endless possibilities and having to find things out for yourself. Two, letting your mind go wild. You break and place blocks, fight monsters at night, create amazing structures, Mind those desired ores. Again, there is no particular objective. Minecraft allows you to create whatever you want, however big or small. It's up to you. 
three, working with other people. Now, your mind alone isn't is getting wild, isn't alone in getting wild. You can get creative with your friends, family, whoever. With Minecraft, it is just as fun to do it by yourself as with others. I have in my home eight devices with Minecraft, most an iOS. Can we please for a second to consider that I am one of four with ages between five to 14, and my dad who has also played Minecraft. So it's really played by all ages. For those that have played it, know about the endless possibilities that the game offers. Last year, I received my iPad as my school device, and one of the games everyone had seemed to download was Minecraft. And while some of my friends used it, and the way some of my friends used it was really interesting. I remember last year, part of the Year 7 education was ancient history and civilization. One group was doing a presentation on Egyptian pyramids, but it wasn't just on a normal keynote. It was on Minecraft. They actually created a 3D pyramid that you could walk in and join because being on Minecraft, it, the whole class was allowed to join and roam around the pyramid. It was a really interesting and fun way to learn, a way we had never been exposed to before. So it got me thinking, how many more ways can we use Minecraft and take it to the next step forward from just being a way to spend time? But then I thought, what is education? What role do games play? Well, education is the learning of a skill or knowledge to be able to do something and grow as a person. It can also be an experience. Games? Well, games are generally a way to pass time. It can be virtual or physical, like a board game. A mind strategy game like chess or a game of chance like trouble. Games are not limited to just past time, but can actually have a knock-on effect on real life situations. Minecraft is becoming one of those games. I want you guys to remember this when you do the gamification session. Minecraft is like a version of Lego, as easy it is to create, you can destroy. Kids have used Lego to build planes, jails, houses, landmarks, whatever they desire. They could build a plane and use it as a prop for their topic about aircraft, or build the Sydney Harbour Bridge for a research project. You can do that on Minecraft, it's just really electronic version with some great extras. Minecraft has opened a new world and new opportunities. It's one of the first games when teachers don't have to change their lessons to engross it with Minecraft. It just fits. Of course, we won't be able to turn every lesson into a Minecraft one, but to be able to adjust the map of the world can land us using in subjects you wouldn't expect, such as maths, history, engineering, geography, chemistry, and English. In maths and geometry, you could create 3D objects, so in lower primary, when they're learning about their shapes, they could create it on Minecraft. In history, you could create a historical building, such as a Caravelle or Mayan temple, and then write an essay about the building. My friend's brother is studying mining engineering at university, and for an assessment, he actually had to use Minecraft to create something. Because it was easy to use, simple to maneuver, it was the ideal platform for that assessment. So now, Minecraft isn't limited to just a kid's education. It's going to university where you are shaping your future and career path. Minecraft and geography go really well together, as Minecraft has land, water, lava, rock, anything, everything and anything. So someone could create an erupting volcano or a huge waterfall. The options are endless. Chemistry in Minecraft is really uh, on the computer version. You can make potions and chemical reactions. The chem chemistry on Minecraft, on the mobile version, is really limited to having the right amount of materials and creating an item, such as a torch, food, and other blocks. It really isn't considered chemistry. Using Minecraft for English is good to recreate a historical moment, then write an essay about it. So as you can see, some topics work better than others. One that is really interested to, interesting to do is science, especially high school science. I have a video that demonstrates this with the topic solid, liquids and gases. Thank you. You guys are all really jam-packed. Now if I said to you, you guys were the particles, what state of the three states of matter that we've talked about, do you think you're in? Solid. Solid. Why do you say solid? Now, 
I'm going to apply some heat. Now that means that I'm going to turn the wood on fire. So I've turned up the heat. When you put heat to ice, what happens? It melts. And it becomes what? A liquid. You're in a liquid state now. What's going to happen, guys, if I apply more heat to you? What happens when you apply more heat to water, which is liquid? It evaporates. So if I burn down the log around you now, what's going to happen? You're going to escape, aren't you? There's going to be nothing holding you in. All right, I've applied some more heat. So once you become a gas particle, you are free. You're not tied to anyone else, and you can therefore go and do what you would like. <laughs> so, yeah, the next clip I'll show you is a Minecraft time lapse video. It's uh, just a cool clip uh, to show just what you can build on Minecraft. So this is one that I found on YouTube and if you just Google Minecraft you will find just millions and hundreds of thousands of videos like these. They can just be someone who's playing Minecraft and recorded it and then just uploaded it to YouTube. Like, you know, you can find anything on the internet really. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a group, um, just as you're watching this, called Minecraft ADU, which is a small team of programmers from the US, Finland and Sweden who work with Mojang Minecraft to make the software more available to schools around the world, making it more affordable. Uh, they sell Minecraft half the price and they do research in American schools to see what works best, best with Minecraft, to see not what Minecraft can teach us but how it can teach us. They offer workshops, customised Minecraft worlds, an online library of ideas and activities to do in Minecraft on all levels, on how to connect the subject and the game into the same lesson. It's made for teachers and by teachers. Oh yeah, I think there's a couple. So yeah, with um, the point number three that I previously discussed, you can have a whole bunch of people discussing it. You can either be you know, on one side of the world and create a server, or you can be sitting right next to your best friend and create something like this. Like, it's pretty cool. How long does it take to build something? Um, it can take a couple of hours. So Minecraft, you know, world, getting a bit nerdy here, um, is about eight minutes. And so over a period of time in real lifetime, it takes, yeah, just two or three hours, four hours sometimes. Like, it's pretty good. So with the development of 3D printing, which I found out is actually here today, which is pretty cool, it's opened up new possibilities for Minecraft. Um, now anyone with a 3D printer can print off their Minecraft designs. Many of us as children have been 3D printing our own designs at home using Lego. 
We must now rethink our design tools as technology moves quicker than ever through the next century. But even without a 3D printer, there are ways to get a 3D version. There are now several companies, programs and ways to have a 3D model. Mineways are just one of them. Mineways is a free open source program for exporting Minecraft models for 3D printing or rendering. You don't need a 3D printer, you can easily upload and view for free and buy models using 3D print services. This image just here is actually a 3D version of it. So someone's created this on their iPad, computer, whatever, and then they've printed it off. And, yeah, the final bit. So, Maya, you've um, shared a lot of information with us and there's probably, what's the one single thing you want to leave us with? Um, you've got an audience of educators and adults, probably a couple of teachers. What do you want to tell them? I want to say, it's not what Minecraft can teach us, but how it can teach us. <laughs> and and there's always a cat. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Maya. Yes, um, I have a I have a couple oh, have of questions, questions for you still. Um, <laughs> now, first of all, and I'm being very selfish here. I have two daughters at home. They're a bit younger than you. Yeah. How do I get them into Minecraft? Because <laughs> <laughs> they've been they've been coming home and saying, "Hey, you need to do this." And I said, "Wait for the weekend. On Friday, I'm meeting Maya." <laughs> so, you know, I'll find out. I mean, you can give me all the details later, but what is your advice to parents with children? Well, first of all, if you've got an iPad or an iPod, download it on the App Store. It does cost uh, a little bit of money. I think it's $8, I think. So it is, yeah, a bit expensive, but I would, I think it's worth it, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could play hours on it. So, yeah, just, I don't know, there was a free version. I don't know if there still is. Um, there are also other products like Minecraft, they're not as good, but there's Eden, which is on the iPad and other iOS products, and they cost a couple of dollars, not as much as eight, but, you know. I think I'll negotiate with my daughters, so I think we'll <laughs> yeah. be fine on the eight dollars. <laughs> um, there was another question from Mark on Twitter. What's your, you know, what would you be your advice to parents about, you know, addiction to Minecraft and how to manage that and then James <laughs> Meyer's dad came in and wanted to answer that question but I give it to you. I think be prepared for them to like be latched onto their device. If you think they're addicted wait until you buy this product. <laughs> um, you know, I, from experience and from my other siblings it's yeah be prepared. <laughs> thank you so much. You were great. Oh, Maya you. it takes a lot to step up here and you've done uh, really, really well. So thank, thank you. you so much. We're so happy to have you.